In my last video, I asked the question, how strong could the Earthlings get if they actually tried? And by my accounts, pretty strong. With the use of consistent training, sparring partners, a gravity room, and two years in the room of spirit and time, by the end of the Buu Saga, the Earthlings would have been on par with the base Saiyans. And with the Kaioken in the mystic form, which for them would have been a 30 times multiplier, they were able to close the gap between their power and the Super Saiyan transformations. But with that out the way, let's see how far the Earthlings can go in Dragon Ball Super if they actually tried. The first missed opportunity in Dragon Ball Super is not learning any forms of fusion. After the Buu Saga, it should have been apparent that there are some enemies in the universe that require the combined strength of two warriors. And if it wasn't apparent, then why not just have it as an emergency technique? We know for a fact that both Krillin and Yamcha were present when Goten and Trunks were fusing, so they know about the dance as well as the rules to make it work. Meaning that only Tien and Yamcha would be able to perform it. So while they're learning the dance from Goten and Trunks, Krillin could have used this time to try and learn the Kaioken from King Kai. All he would have to do is ask Goku to bring him there and begin training. I don't believe the fusion dance would have taken so long to learn, seeing as the kids learned it in a few days. So over the next four years, Tien and Yamcha would just practice it from time to time, making sure they still got it down. As for Krillin, he would get the Kaioken within that time and train it up to the level of his friends. So going into Super, who could the Earthlings take on at this point? Well, with the use of a Kaioken times 10 to 20 stacked on their Mystic forms, they'd be able to go against Fat Buu and hold their own. Yamcha and Tien's fusion, on the other hand, at full power, could rival a hypothetical Super Saiyan 3 Vegito. For those interested in how I calculated this, I'll put it in the description, seeing as it's a lot. But yeah, the fusion would be able to take on Buhan and defeat him. As for Beerus, it does nothing. All it does is impress the gods, seeing as the Fuse Warrior would have given him the best fight since he's woke up. Until Super Saiyan God Goku, that is. Now that a god form has been introduced, the Earthlings would now lag behind. The second missed opportunity was not refining any of their old moves. The Earthlings in Dragon Ball all have interesting and unique techniques. Most notably Tien who has a range of moves to pick from. So seeing as the Earthlings wouldn't know that God Key could be taught, since they don't have any evidence of it yet, this would be a good way for them to diversify themselves from the Saiyans, who are for the most part just powerhouses. So within the year between Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F, the Earthlings would improve their utility techniques. The Solar Flare x 100 would be developed here by Krillin. For those who don't know, the Solar Flare x 100 is a stronger variation of the Solar Flare that can blind opponents even if their eyes are closed if used correctly. And on top of that, it strips the enemy's ability to sense Ki. Tien would approve upon the multi-form technique to the point where he can control how much Ki he puts into each clone. This allows him to make weaker clones for distractions rather than trying to overpower an enemy. This way he can keep his energy rather than losing half his power for one clone that's just half his strength. Think of them more like shadow clones at this point. Well, weaker shadow clones. For Yamcha, I couldn't think of a way to naturally make the spirit ball better, so I decided to combine the move with another one. That being Master Roshi's Thunder Shock Surprise, which is a paralyzing technique that uses key infused electricity, making Yamcha's spirit ball a more versatile attack, allowing it to both inflict high damage and immobilize an opponent. He would obviously learn the normal technique from Roshi, and then with some practice, he would implement it into a spirit ball. With these refined techniques in hand, the Earthlings would be able to put up a decent fight against first form Frieza, not because they can overpower him, but due to how they use these techniques to their advantage. Blinding him, paralyzing him, and confusing him with clones, all whilst landing attacks here and there, slowly wearing him down. Frieza would be forced into his second form after almost being cut in half by Krellin's Destructo Disc, and in response, Tien Shou would appear again taking on the Tyrant, doing surprisingly well and the fight would continue until Goku and Vegeta arrive at the battlefield to take over. Now this is where the third missed opportunity appears. Up until now, the Earthlings wouldn't have known that God Key can be taught, but once they see Vegeta go blue, this should have clued them in. By simply asking Whis or Beerus, they would have confirmed that it is possible for mortals to be taught how to use God Key. Now as to how they would convince Whis to teach them, well this is where I believe Yamcha's charisma would save the day. He'd convince the angel that the earthlings got this far without the use of any fancy saiyan transformations, and that he should give them a shot. Whis would ponder on this, and if you remember, Whis is still looking for a replacement for Beerus, as Vegeta hasn't actually agreed to it fully. So Whis agrees under one condition. That being that one of them has to become a candidate for God of Destruction. Krellin having a family would instantly say no, and Tien having other ambitions here on Earth would also say no. Yamcha on the other hand doesn't have much going on right now, so he agrees. With this, the Earthlings training with the Angel would begin. 
fast forward a couple months and the tournament of destroyers would be announced and at this point i don't believe the earthlings would have grasped the concept of god keep fully so in preparation for the tournament for the next three days weiss would put the earthlings within the realm inside of his staff which is similar to the Roman spirit of time but you can only move if you're using god key since we don't know the time dilation within the staff we'll just say that it's just like the Roman spirit in time meaning that one day equals one year so they'd be here for the next three years fully mastering god key while training with one another with god key flowing through their veins how strong would they be after these three years in their base forms, I'd say that they'd be stronger than base Goku and Vegeta from ROF, but weaker than the current base form of the Saiyans. This is due to the Saiyans getting a one year head start with Whis. Now something I wanted to mention is that the Mystic form gives you power based on your potential, and I believe that after unlocking God Key, it's safe to say that the Earthling's potential would skyrocket, as potential isn't something that is static. Now how much stronger would they get? Well it's hard to say at this point, but seeing as Gohan who barely trained since Cell went from Buu Saga level to Super Saiyan Blue level in one day, then I think we can say that with the Mystic form, the Earthlings would now be hitting Super Saiyan God levels of power. So going into the Tournament of the Destroyers, what would happen? Well the lineup would change, having two of the Earthlings instead of Buu and Piccolo. For this scenario, I went with Krellin and Yamcha. The order would go Goku, Yamcha, Vegeta. Krellin and Monaka. The only big changes would be that after Frost gets caught for cheating, Yamcha would run through the rest of Universe 6 until he goes against Hit. And because of Yamcha's fight, Vegeta would perform far better against Hit here than how he performed against him in canon. Even with that advantage he'd still lose, seeing as Hit would just progress his time skip if need be. Now Krellin even with the use of a x20 Kaioken on top of his mystic form would still lose. After that, Goku does what he does and Hit eventually forfeits against Monaka. So even with God Key coursing through their veins, the Earthlings would still struggle to keep up with the Saiyans growing power. The fourth missed opportunity was not learning any new techniques. It's safe to say that Goku's instant transmission is by far one of the most useful techniques in the Dragon Ball series. If the Earthlings wanted to advance themselves even more, then they would have gone after it. If they did decide to obtain it, all they would have to do is ask Goku, and since Goku hasn't been shown to be able to teach this technique, he'd most likely bring them to planet Yardrat and let them learn it themselves. Once here, the Earthlings undergo spirit control training, and after a few months, they would have obtained every technique from the Yardrats. With instant transmission, a more effective multiform, gigantification, healing, and spirit fission in their arsenal, and a power boost from the spirit control training, how strong would the Earthlings be? Well, they'd still lag behind Goku and Vegeta in terms of power, but with the addition of these techniques, they'd be far more versatile. So going into the Goku Black art, who could they take on? Well, in terms of power, they wouldn't be able to keep up with Goku Black after a few of his Zenkai boosts. However, even with all of Goku Black's power, once Zamasu and Goku Black fuse, after being overwhelmed by Goku and Vegeta, the Earthlings would simply defuse them with the use of Spirit Fission. After that, Goku Black could simply be defeated by Vegeta or Goku, and either Goku or Tien could seal Zamasu away with the proper containment, putting an end to the Goku Black arc. Now, within the time between the Goku Black arc and the T.O.P., the Earthlings with the use of the Ruman Spirit in time could close the gap between themselves and the base Saiyans that was caused by the one year head start that the Saiyans got with Whis. This is because at this time, both Goku and Vegeta slowed down in their training due to other factors, you know, their family. The next missed opportunity isn't really something that they miss, seeing as the next opportunity is something that would only have appeared after the Yardrat training. But if they did want to increase their power output even more, they could have combined two techniques. The two I have in mind are the healing technique from the Yardrats and the Kaioken. We know for a fact that the Kaioken is a strenuous technique and at most we've only ever seen it used at times 20 in the canon series. That's why for the majority of these scenarios, I only gave the Earthlings a 20 times multiplier. However, if the Earthlings could find a way to constantly heal themselves during a fight, then they could circumvent the limitations of the Kaioken, essentially allowing them to tap into higher multipliers without having to worry about their bodies being reduced to ash. I'm not going to say that they could do a Kaioken times 500 or anything, seeing as that would probably kill them on cast. So if anything, we can say that they can tap into a times 50 to times 20 with the use of constant healing. And if we're saying that their mystic forms are at Super Saiyan God levels, then with the use of these higher Kaioken multipliers, they'd be on par with or stronger than Goku and Vegeta in their blue forms. Now with these two techniques working in tandem, who could they take on in the TLP? Well at these levels, they'd reach the upper echelon of fighters, only being outdone by characters such as MUI Goku and Jiren. Now what would this change? First, the lineup changes here seeing as Yamcha is more suitable to be a contestant in a scenario, so just replace Frieza with Yamcha. As for the tournament itself, 
they'd go through the weaker characters quicker, obviously. And as for the big changes, the Earthlings would heal everyone up when given a chance. The fight against Annie Laza would end prematurely thanks to the Earthlings defusing the warrior. This boat and Topo would have been eliminated much quicker due to being overwhelmed by the majority of the Sea Fighters. And thanks to the Earthlings, most of Universe 7 makes it to the end. Piccolo and Roshi being the only ones to be eliminated since the Earthlings inclusion wouldn't have changed what happened to them. Now when facing off against Jiren, Yamcha and Tien would fuse into Tiencha and take the lead with the others backing him up. However, Jiren would still power through, eliminating most of them and Seventeen still sacrifices himself in an attempt to defeat Jiren leaving only Goku, Vegeta, and Tiensha. Events would play out similarly to how they did in the tournament, only difference being that after MUI Goku's fight, Tiensha would have easily disposed of Jiren with little effort, putting an end to the TLP. Remember, a weakened Frieza and Seventeen were the ones that faced off against Jiren at the end before Goku arrived. But seeing as Tiensha would have been far stronger than those two, then even if Jiren retaliated, he still would have fallen. Moving on, since Frieza wouldn't be alive due to the changes to the story, unfortunately, the Broly fight never takes place, making Moro the next big bad. Before Moro's introduction, the Earthlings set their goals on Ultra Instinct seeing as it's a technique that even mortals can wield. They'd spend as much time with Whis trying to unlock the technique, but unfortunately for them, it wouldn't be that easy. When the Moro arc begins, the Earthlings would be absent at the beginning due to being on Beerus' planet. However, they would make their way back to Earth once Whis departs in order to meet with his father. I do believe that Vegeta would skip out on Planet Yardrat, seeing as the Earthlings already learned all their techniques, and Vegeta being Vegeta wouldn't want to copy their abilities. Instead, I think he'd go back to Beerus' planet, looking for another way to gain strength. When he does, he'd see that Whis is gone and the same dialogue between Beerus and Vegeta happens, alluding to there being another power besides UI, meaning that Vegeta's Hakai training would start earlier than before. Now when 7-3 and their gang made their way to Earth, in the manga only Krellin was present seeing as Tien and Yamcha were both MIA. However, with the use of the instant transmission, they'd all be present. When 7-3 and his gang show up, the two others with him are quickly taken care of, leaving only 7-3, and I don't believe that he'd bother trying to grab the back of any of the warriors' neck. Rather, I believe he'd resort back to Moro's power, seeing as he'd be facing off against four of them, Piccolo included. And since the Earthlings don't have any knowledge of Moro's abilities, they'd probably get their energy absorbed before they realize what happened, and even if they attempted to heal themselves, their energy would just be absorbed again. Same thing happened to both Goku and Vegeta. Piccolo would mention them again, and because of that, this leads Moro to giving them two months of training. Within this time, the Earthlings could use the Room of Spirit in Time to gain an extra year on top of the two months. By the time Moro arrives, the Earthlings would be the strongest fighters on Earth, and with the use of instant transmission, the Earthlings would go around the world taking care of Moro's men. While this is happening, Piccolo and Gohan face off against 7-3, just like in the manga, and by the time that the Earthlings are done taking care of the enemies around the Earth, they'd arrive back on a battlefield with everyone else just as Moro himself would be touching down. When he does, the Earthlings immediately challenge him, Moro believing that the pushovers sends in Sagambo to take care of them. At the levels they're at now, they'd make quick work of him, Moro's energy or not. Once Moro sees this, he would take the Earthlings more seriously. All three of them go into their mystic forms and stack a 70 times Kaioken on top of it, and immediately rush Moro. And even with all this power, they wouldn't be able to outright beat Moro, seeing as Moro would be far stronger than them, but through them periodically landing hits here or there, Moro would lose more and more energy due to spirit fission. And once Moro realizes that he's losing energy and is back to a corner, he would attempt to use his magic to escape similarly to how he did when he faced off against Vegeta. But with the Earthlings at this point having more experience with instant transmission, they'd intercept him before he made his way back to 7-3. And with the use of their signature attacks, they'd erase the weakened Moro from existence, putting an end to this arc. Now with Frieza being dead, the Heater's goals still would have been to become the rulers of the universe. And without having to deal with the Emperor, they'd be able to enact their plans. As to how this affects our heroes, well, it doesn't. You see, Frieza was essentially doing the same thing which was ruling over the universe. But the Saiyans didn't really bat an eye. It's only when Frieza threatens them is when they act. Also, with Frieza being dead, Granola wouldn't wish to be the strongest, and because of that, the idea to wish for Gas to be the strongest wouldn't have crossed Alec's mind. If you remember, Elec doesn't care about battle power, he only cares about intel and control. So maybe somewhere down the line, they'd attempt to take Goku and the others out, but that time isn't now. Lastly, going into the Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie, the Earthlings would have been training for UI for the last three years. 
and with the way that UI is explained, it is a technique that can be learned by mortals with God Key and requires a link between your consciousness and your body to allow you to dodge and attack without thinking. It requires a disciplined mind and body. It isn't just another power up that can be attained through emotions or just physical training. And with that being said, I do believe that the Earthlings would have been able to tap into it by the end of the three years, with Krellin and Tien having a better grasp on it compared to Yamcha. I say this because in the manga, Master Roshi uses principles of UI and is able to dodge Jiren, and it's said that with many years of training and a disciplined mind, that Roshi was able to achieve this. However, with the Earthlings in this scenario, having spent their time with an angel for the past five to six years, and the past three years strictly focusing on these principles outright, then it could have happened. For those saying that even Beerus and the other gods haven't attained it so the Earthlings wouldn't be able to, well the thing is about the Destroyers are, the mentality of a Destroyer legitimately conflicts with the principles of the UI, and that's why after years of training many of them still struggle. So with this, how strong do they become? Well unlike Goku whose Saiyan body made a form to utilize UI to the best of its abilities, these Earthlings would probably be knocking on the door of UI Omen Goku. With that being said, tell me what your thoughts are on this video, what did I miss that you think that could have made the Earthling stronger, and if you disagree with any of my points, feel free to leave a comment down below, but yeah. Thank you to everyone that watched this video. I hope you have a good day. Peace, peace. Deuce, deuce.